Well, one of the things I had to do this week is I had to talk with Dustin from Convoy Home Loans because in the last month or so, if you haven't been paying attention, rates have been all over the place. One time while I was gone, they actually ticked down to 5.99. Always good in the world. Pending home sales exploded higher. And then they went up. And then they went up some more. And now they're probably going to go up still some more. So, Dustin, I know you've been in the camp that you thought that was a head fake. You have been proven right but what is going on in the environments for mortgages? It seems pretty wild out there. Yeah, no, mortgage rates have obviously went up quite a bit. And I'd say to the point it's almost skyrocketed in the last, you know, two weeks. Um, all of the, you know, gains that we had, if you could say it in terms of rates going down, like you said, touching like 599 on the average 30 year fix about a month ago have been erased. And now we're talking, you know, rates even on primary residences some people touching 7%. Um, oh. And I think it's kind of obvious what we're seeing. The feds are battling, you know, how much do we need to raise so that we can actually get inflation down when the economy and, and job reports and employment are too strong that it's not really right. helping them at all. So it's it's just a ping pong battle that's going on right now between the feds, you know, the economy and, and inflation. Yeah. I guess there's one thing that's coming up. I think two weeks from now, there's another Fed meeting. I think we're in the same camp, but let's let's make sure we are. I believe the Fed should give us 50 basis points, but I think they will give us a quarter. Uh, how does that feel to you? What do you think? I think it's a, just be a, I think if I heard you say it, but Bernakeed or Bernakeed. Uh, You're Bernakeed, yeah. yeah it's going to be, um, I mean, yeah, it, it, given the most recent, two, three weeks of what we've seen, it should be 50. It'll help us once again, rip the bandaid off quicker. But I think we're going to see 25 probably through summer and then maybe a pause, but there's not going to be a cut. There's uh, no cut coming. People, Come on. There's yeah, no cut. Like, it's just not foreseeable in my opinion until maybe uh, late 2024, realistically. Yeah. Late. Cut, like, yeah. late 24, maybe 2025. Yeah, it's funny. I'm putting something out there now that I think we should really think about the Fed funds rate, the terminal rate, whatever you want to call that, being five or five and a quarter for a couple of years. We should just expect it. I think there's a lot of us, maybe myself included, that thought we would get to the other side of this. We'd be over the hump in 2023. Then the Fed you know, brings us back to four and a half or four. At this point, with PCE core going higher, not lower, breaking trend with 500,000 jobs in January being created above trend. Economy's stronger than, than maybe I expected. Now, again, that's all data dependent. It could change. We get the employment data next Friday, but um, yeah, there's no cut coming. These, these Kathy Woods and Jeremy Siegels of the world that said, we're going to get a cut in July. Uh, that's not happening. That, that ship sailed clearly. Yeah. Well, the other thing that I think is happening, it's it's interesting to watch the mortgage market. I think, because again, mortgage rates ticked, what, 7.3? Was that September, October of last year? Yeah, I, I want to say it was October and, and John and I were looking at, we're like at October, September, you know, rates okay. right now or levels. I think the, the the 10 years got a four in front of it right now. It does. Right? Like, yeah, it did this morning. Was, you know, something that not a lot of people thought was coming in March or even in February, I guess we're two days into March, but it was hovering three nine for about a week, you know. Right. So I just I just don't know, you know, in terms of the mortgage market per se, my expertise, it's like we'll be fine if we can just have a solid footing and some sort of even if it's I think it's gonna be between six and a half to seven is what we'll mm -hmm. see for the next two years. I'm okay. hoping that's the case. Um I'm hoping that it can just stay in those realms because what hurts is when it goes from you know six and a half down to five nine nine. Everybody gets in, gets their pre approvals. Now all of a sudden they wait a week to make an offer. Now it's back at seven, and then yeah. it kind of resets the whole thing. So the the volatility that we're seeing right now is what's hurting us. It, it would be a lot easier on the consumers in the mortgage market, in my opinion, if we could just find some sort of stable footing. Which you know we'll see if that actually happens. Yeah, I think we learned a couple of things. So again, the beauty of having our weekly discussions and then I talk with real estate agents, you know, top 1% around the country is we've learned a couple of things. Sub six mortgages unleashes demand. Yeah. Just bananas. And in an environment where there's no inventory, that's not healthy. The other thing we've learned is at 7%, supply doesn't increase. 
because of interest rate lock-in, the move up buyer. So I agree with you. I, I think rates need to settle between six and a half and seven, at least for the year. And again, that will be, that means I miss one of my 12 calls because I thought it would average sub six, but I think you're right. I think it needs to average. It needs to just settle down. And to our first topic, I think that's why the Fed should do 50. Let's just get to the damn terminal rate so that banks know, and then they can start collapsing the margin. Because again, the margin over the 10 year is still, you know, on the fat side. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, do you I think, think it's going to, we're going to hit five and a half or at five and a quarter on the terminal? So my old call was five. Uh, I now think five and a quarter. Uh, I think we're going to get three 25 base. We're going to get Bernanke three times, just a quarter, yeah. quarter, quarter. And then they're going to stop for at least a year. Pause for a year. That's what I'm thinking. So pause till next summer. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in line with that. I mean, I would say I wouldn't be surprised if they stopped at five and a half. I just don't, I don't see, I, I don't see them getting inflation where they want it to be um, anytime soon. If they do a quarter point the next three, because I think it's what March 14th is the next one, right? Correct. Um, correct. I don't see they're going to get it to where they want it to be. And, and Well, th this is what I think. So, Again, we've seen goods inflation come down, which was the easy stuff. The hard stuff is housing. And that's why I think we're going to get Bernanke, because I think Powell and his cronies are counting on the housing in, to become deflationary in the summer and progressively get better for them. So I think they're just going to give us a quarter in hope that that's true. So if we get to June or July, and then that takes us from 6-4, which I think was the last reading, to like 4-8. I think they're going to be happy with that. Oh, but, for sure. Yeah. If they get below, I think they're trying to buy time to summer, obviously. It's kind of clear. Yeah, it, because we have to have positive rates. Can you believe, Dustin, we still have negative rates? Yeah. We positive, still have I, negative rates. Yeah. Like once, I mean, the the perfect, not perfect, but if we can get, you know, inflation down to four and, and we can have some sort of positive rate, like you said, so that the economy can actually make some ground here, it would be a, a game changer. That's That's all yeah. we want. Yeah, we got to get to positive rates. My and again, folks, if you don't know what that means, that means inflation is below the ten year, right? That's just how I call it there. So, you know, we get inflation at four, and the ten years at five. That's you know, positive rate of one. Today we have negative rates, right? The ten years at four point oh two, um, and inflation last reading was six. So we don't even we don't only have negative rates. We have two percent negative rates. Yeah, that doesn't work. It doesn't you work. Know <laughs> That's that's not, not that's not good. That's not good. But there's a lot going on in the mortgage market where I have two one buy downs that are being very common. We actually have home builders buying rates down, right? Pulte Homes going to four and a quarter. Uh, Toll yeah. Brothers going to five nine nine. I keep telling people do the math, right? A, a lower rate if you're going to live there a long time. Uh, it, it really helps. So what's going on for you? I know you still have some clients reaching out buying homes and, and whatnot. What what's uh, what's some exciting packages? Yeah, we're still, we're still doing, you know, majority of our clients are going to be investor clients and and a lot of them recently are, are and this is it, always their call, but they're riding the wave of, hey, I'm going to be able to refi in a year or two and I don't want to buy down the rate. And that's their call. I get that. Um, sure. And ultimately, you know, with depending on what type of investor loan that you're doing, um, but if you're doing a DSCR loan, those are going to have prepays. So always let them know, look, like if you're going to do a buy down, make sure that the buy down recovery period is after the prepayment period. Yeah. Don't do a buy down if it's going to take you less time to get, you know, out of it profitable and you still have a prepay like that. Yeah. That's the thing when we're doing, uh, you know, buy I love down. That, I love that you do that for folks because not everybody gets that. Yeah, that's huge. Like the, <laughs> it would make no sense then. Yeah, exactly. So don't 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 sign up for a financial loss. That's that's not a good thing. Yeah. So what else is going on in the market? Uh, you know, we actually had, you know, a pretty solid February because of the January rush, like we yep. spoke yeah. about, like we talked about the 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 sub six, like the average yeah. 30 year fixed primary drove in a bunch of applications, right? I'm sure. Yeah. Now our, our March is looking a little bit less bleak because the amount of applications we've gotten in the last two weeks have been a result of, well, yep. Yahoo Finance is putting out finally that rates are going up, rates are going up. Um, but yeah. you know, it's been good. It's been a, a lot of purchase transactions and, and a lot of, uh, you know, out of state that we're doing right now. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, 
We that actually, done- that actually is something I talked about yesterday with one of my experts. Is there's really a position that out of state investing is going to get more of a look, right? Um, so I think all of so I've got a couple clients that you know started in California and only invested in like you know Southern California, and sure. now a lot of them are venturing out just to like Tennessee and Ohio and yep. um, like Florida. It's just look, it doesn't have to be. We get this question a lot because. One of my clients actually yesterday was like, how do I take the next step and go to commercial? How do I get to like the bigger apartment deals? And I'm, I'm letting them know, look, right now, if you're looking in Southern California, don't look at bigger is better. Just look at the net. Look at what the ROI is. Bigger right? is look- not better. Exactly. It's, and it's not. It doesn't. It's, it, it, that, that is not a rule. That's a Grant Cardone saying. It is not always. It is true. Sometimes it is not always true. Exactly. Yeah. It's funny. I just did a video with uh, Jonathan Twomley, who's a big syndicator. And uh, we just did three videos. The first video is stop buying real estate, basically commercial. Video number two is 50% haircuts coming. We talked about how NOI can change and cap rates increasing. And then number three, we talked about the real estate disaster, extended pretend, foreclosure, and people walking away. Because the commercial market, they're in a little bit more trouble. Yeah, oh, they're, they're, office retail. Yeah, some, some some multifamily was overpriced. Yeah, again, those videos will come out the next day or so. But yeah, the commercial market's in trouble. Short term debt, bad assumptions, bridge loans, single families, thirty year debt, eighty five percent of people below four percent or five percent or whatever Black Knight says, rock solid. But commercial, whoo, be careful, folks. I agree, uh, D- Dustin. If somebody wanted to reach out to you and see what's what, how would they do that? Yeah, you can go to our website, convoyhomeloans.com, and just submit a ticket and mention that you came from ORAT. That way, uh, John or myself can help you out. Yeah, that's the deal I have with Convoy, folks. That's why they're on the channel every week is if somebody reaches out, you get one of the two principals, none of these little muckety mucks at the bottom. You get one of the top two guys. Thanks, Dustin. Thank you.